Star Drive 117.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind Hey guys, how's it going? It's Wednesday, March 22nd And this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8 We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud And make sure to support us on Patreon So what is happening on this wonderful and awesome Wednesday? We've got current news from around the world The word study on the book of revelation and of course health is happiness with dr zinni from canada all right everyone how are you doing it is wednesday and i am super thankful for all of you joining us here on the morning star drive yes wednesday service tonight i really hope that all of you are looking forward to receiving fire and grace but most importantly, make sure let's always pray for our leaders to come with a, a great message and also encourage them, uh, give them good feedback. Good feedback meaning constructive and praises. Encourage them more and more. They are doing such an amazing job, right? And reminding everyone, uh, as our viewership's going higher and higher right now, and I know it's particularly because of the situation we're in right now, um, if you are out there, would like to communicate with me, but you don't want to leave a comment, just tap the like button. If you're on your phone right now, just tap the like on the la on the laptop, whatever it is. Tap that like button and I know that you guys are enjoying it. And uh, on top of that, if you guys have any comments or anything else, go ahead, write your comments there too. I do want to see how you guys are doing. Uh, if it's something a little bit more private, you can DM. You can DM me or you can write me an email. It's all up to you guys. Uh, questions, requests, testimonies. Of course, question answer Thursday is tomorrow. Uh, so any questions, please drop them in the comments below once again. But most importantly, guys, we need to build this community. We really, really do. You know, uh, SoundCloud. Uh, you can leave your likes and comments there too. I am looking forward to talking to you guys and connecting with you guys as much as possible. There are several people already reached out and I've talked to them on the phone or, or on Zoom and stuff like that also. Just the people who really want to talk about what's going on also. Either way. <coughs> so once again, SoundCloud is alive. Yes, it was supposed to shut down on March 17th, but the current situation, I don't think it's a good idea to uh, get rid of a platform. Right, especially when everyone wants more information, is not a good idea. You know, I was like, you know what, I might as well just pay for it, and I know that God will take care of me in the future. Uh, it's too important to get rid of a platform at this moment in time, so I did, you know, buy another year's worth of SoundCloud. So we have one more year left. We don't know how long. I will pray to God this doesn't last for the entire year, like until March like seventeenth the next year. I pray to like let's hope that that never happens, right? But uh, for me, I think it's worth the money more than anything else, right? And super thankful for all of you guys out there who are supporting financially. You enable me to buy these types of things like to uh, resubscribe for my SoundCloud or uh, other different things that I'm doing also. And uh, <laughs> second mistake on my Espresso with Sky YouTube, my shorts. Same thing happened, guys. I, I, remember, I scheduled all these videos months in advance, and that basically means that um, this uh, last Friday and today's Tuesday, they were both based on Noah, right? About, you know, uh, you know, I do talk about central figures making mistakes. But let me just make a clarification on this because I did take it down, uh, this one too, because someone says, hey, uh, people can misunderstand. I was like, oh, gosh, I, I didn't check the next video. But either way, uh, one thing I do want to tell you guys is, Central figures, there, remember, there's multiple levels of central figures, right? There are judges, there's kings, there's prophets, and of course, there's the highest, like Jesus, Messiah, right? And um, we need to understand that uh, mistakes, especially from prophets and below, you know, well, apostles are in there too, right? So you have apostles at the second level, and then below them, you have like kings and judges, no, prophets, and the last one is kings and judges, I believe, right? So you have those four different levels of uh, central figures, Everything, like, big mistakes only apply to the bottom three, which is prophets, apostles, and kings and judges, right? None of us have been made and trained by God. So when you think about Jesus, we're thinking perfect, right? Perfect meaning that uh, he's not going to make those great mistakes. You're not going to commit the fall. You're not going to do anything crazy like that, right? So there's number one. So, you know, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm talking about Noah, because remember these videos, the last two videos I did that people could misunderstand is coming from a video about Noah and Noah got drunk. Is being drunk a good thing? Absolutely not. But someone who is a prophet of his time, he's going to make mistakes like Samson, like David, like Solomon. They're all going to make their mistakes, but it all leads to the pinnacle, which was Jesus Christ, right? 
And if you reach that top level of mission, this is when, yeah, you'll make like the basic mistakes, like you mistakenly did something here or there, like those types of things, but you're not going to make these huge mistakes like the other central figures of the past. So I'm just clearing that up. I put up another video by mistake. Thank God only 30 people watched it before I took it down. But I just didn't want anyone to uh, have any uh, misunderstandings. Second mistake, I took down the one from Friday and I didn't realize I had another one coming for, for Tuesday, which is from the same video. I got to go check my videos once again to see that I don't have like another one coming uh, on, uh, what day is it? I, another one coming on this Friday. I got to check it. Like even if it comes from the Noah one, I still have to look at it and say, uh, <coughs> check to see if it's, people are going to misunderstand in this very, very sensitive time. It is super sensitive, sensitive right? So, uh, yes, another lesson learned, again, within, like, all within two days. Yes, that is my fault, by the way. Checking is life, right? That is my fault. So I do sincerely apologize, and I take responsibility by taking down that video, and I'll post it at a later time when it's not as sensitive. All right. So, um... Right now, you know, uh, if you guys don't know what's going on in Korea, it's just, uh, you know, it's a gong show over there. It's a clown show. It's a circus. Uh, and rightfully so. Rightfully so, meaning um, it's at a point where people are not sure who to trust or what side people are on. And that's, you know, imagine you're in the thick of things. We're not even in the thick of things where we are. We're just listening to it saying, oh, that's interesting. But imagine if you were actually in it, right? And of course, people, it's, there's going to be, and there's a lot of news out there. Uh, I did check some of the news in Korea, and there's like there's news everywhere about all the different things that, for uh, against Pastor John, against Sun's name, against Prophet. There's a bunch of stuff out there, but I did find some news out there that was kind of interesting because um, it was very uh, what do you call it objective. Like I it was called I think it was called the Huffington Post, and it was just basically saying what was happening and it's happening again, right? And um, I looked at this like oh that's that's quite interesting, right? That. Uh, <coughs> It's quite interesting that it's happening, you know, uh, that at least there's like some objectivity over there with people who are like doing things like real journalism and stuff, right? But a bunch of other stuff is just a lot of just like, oh my gosh, again, oh, we got to get away from these people. But it's like, you know, they, they really don't know what's going on. It's coming strictly from a media perspective, which we do understand even like when I'm in America and Canada, journalism sells when there are scandals and journalism sells when there's something crazy that everyone's talking about and of course the hot topic is providence and that's why it's everywhere right now so i want to tell you something that that might be very very interesting for you guys to hear and i need to talk something a little bit more spiritual all right it's gonna be a lot more spiritual now um for all of us we understand that the history of god and the, and the path of a central figure is 21 three and a half and 21 we all know this right <clears throat> and the interesting thing is um when we look at the past history, we learn time, times, and half a times. We we know the year 1999 is the year when um, tribulation hits. And we know that in January, uh, I believe the, the Korean media had their first broadcast against Providence. And there was like, within those three and a half years, there was like three to four broadcasts. I think it was three or four. I don't remember, but at least three, right? And this is when a lot of people left. But, you know, one of the things that people don't really talk about is... You know, like, can a broadcast really make people leave? And the answer is, in Korea, yeah, because people lost their jobs, people lost their friends, families went against them, you know, parents were beating their children. Like, it's, it was just really crazy in 1999, right? And um, the one thing people don't know about 1999 is... Uh, Tell me if this sounds familiar. So in the very beginning of the first half of history, which is 21 years from 1978 to 1999, in those 21 years, uh, there were like the first five, the first five that came to this history. And one of them, his last name was An, right? And, you know, obviously in this history, he was really, really big. He became, you know, you'll never hear about him now because he left in 1999. So what eventually happened was, and it's not talked about a lot, but it's very interesting for us to know is, he was actually Sunseem's right-hand man. He was like the second in command. He was tall, good-looking, went to Seoul National University. Uh, he spoke English. I believe he spoke German. Uh, very intelligent, very smart, very charismatic. I met him once in America. Uh, he was speaking at that time too. And uh, he was someone that everyone trusted and everyone believed in. <clears throat> now, on top of that, what happened was, uh, little did anyone know uh, no one knew until like later in the year 1999 is um, he was the one behind the broadcast. Like he's the one that gave all the information 
to the broadcasters so that, the, you know, so, and it came out in 1999, right? And the interesting thing about this is not only did he give the information to uh, the broadcast station, he basically said that Sunstream's time is over and it's now the time of the apostles, right? Now it's a time for the moon to shine. So the sun has set and now the moon is coming out. So now it's time for us to, uh, uh, it's time for us to take over. And he basically, at 1999, uh, 21 years after the first half of history, the right-hand man, the person closest to Sunstream, broke off and started uh, their own thing. And they called that church like Exodus, right? So when you look at that, you're like, whoa, that's quite interesting. Why? Well, we got to think about this in terms of repeating history. So 1999 to 1978 is the first 21 years. And then after that, you have like, then you had this big, crazy tribulation, 1999. And a lot of people left at that time too. And you had the great period until 2002, right? So then 2002 to 2023 is also the second half of history and another 21 years. And what happens in 2023 at the end of 21 years? Same thing. It is Sunstream's right-hand person, the person closest, someone who's uh, good-looking or pretty. I guess you could say pretty, someone who speaks really well. And all these things are happening here. And we're kind of seeing kind of like a similar thing. And as more and more things are getting confirmed and the more that we, you know, as a lot of us, uh, I know that the translation is actually not out on the two-hour audio. But if you listen to that, you're going to get a better idea of how uh, serious that conversation was and why it's crazy in Korea. Right. So that's what I'm saying why it's crazy in Korea because of that audio. Right. And uh, this is like the repeating 1978 to 1999, 21 years. And after that first half, big tribulation. And then now we have the exact same thing, 2002, 2023, second half of history, 21 years is done. And it's the right hand person is, is kind of the person in the spotlight. And it looks like it's the exact same thing happening. Right. So when we kind of look at this as history repeats itself, uh, it's something that we do have to look into and say, wow, that's quite interesting. It's like this, right? It's quite interesting that it's happening in the exact same way. So, you know, someone might ask me is, um, you know, why do I think? Why do I think? And for me is I, <clears throat> as more and more information is coming out and more and more we get to understand and see like, oh, okay, so this part's true and this part's true. Okay, so this part's true here. And slowly more and more information comes out. And like I said right now, we don't have full information. And that's why it's very, very, uh, you know, uh, it's hard to say certain things. But for myself, I have certain things in mind. But, you know, I'm trying to be objective and not trying to tell you guys like, hey, it's this kind of thing, right? And But it's very interesting to see this repeating history, right? And one of the things that Sunseem did say in the past is from Revelation chapter 20. And what happens is Revelation chapter 20 talks about Satan going into the abyss for a thousand years. And then when you get to verse 7, it says that Satan is released after the thousand years are over. He's released from his prison. And then what does he do? It's like he goes out to deceive the entire world. Right? He to deceive everyone. Right? And that's, um, that's the crazy part is... Satan is released. So the question that, that, that was given to Sunstein was, why would Satan be released? Why would he be given this chance to go out and, you know, take these people, right? And especially believers. And Sunstein's answer was, it's the same as, <coughs> it's the same as Adam and Eve. And we're like, how is that the same? He's like, well, the words are given first. What's the word to Adam and Eve? Do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The word is out. The answer is already given first. You get the answer first, it's all there. Which means that there is no reason and excuse for Adam and Eve to fall because they've already got the answer. Now, if God said nothing to them, then what happens? Then it's kind of God's fault because he never told them, but he gives them the answer first, right? They are trained and they are made. They have their time of training and then the big battle happens, right? He says in the same way, what's the point of practicing soccer if you never have a game? Why are we training our faith? Why are we doing all these things in our faith right now? Like, remember, think about it. Before the rapture, all the 1 a.m. prayers, 3 a.m. prayers, 21-day condition, 40-day condition, 70 day, uh, 40 days, 70 days, 110 days. You know, it's, it's like we had all these conditions going over and over and over again. And the reason is, is not because we're just there to play around, right? Haven't you ever thought to yourselves, like, you know, I'm going to talk specifically in foreign countries. 
We have never been through a real tribulation before. Never. We haven't. Everything we hear is in Korea. Everything we hear is in larger countries. It doesn't affect us. It really doesn't. But it's interesting because when you look at first half of history, it was focused on Korea and Korea had 21 years. And what happens after those 21 years, Korea is, you know, they go through their big battle against Satan. And all the training over the last 21 years comes to light. And those who make it, make it. And those who don't, don't. We don't realize that we're in a real match. We're in a real war. We just don't know when it's going to happen. Well, technically we could know if we knew repeating history. But the same thing, you know, same thing is now what happens from 1999, Sunstein went into the foreign countries. So now Sunstein begins to focus on the foreign country. The foreign countries begin to grow. And they, you know, as they grow and grow, they get their 21 years. And now after the 21 years, it's not just Korea. Korea is handling quick and fast. And I'm going to say that they're doing a very, very good job, much better than they did in 1999. There were no statements made by the headquarters, no statements made by churches. It was very, very, what do we do? We've never been here before, right? In the same way, now it's the foreign countries. And the foreign countries, we've been pushing and pushing for 21 years. And now the foreign countries are getting our first test. Korea is our second test. We get to look at them and say, wow, they did that quick and they did it fast, right? But for us, it's our first time and this is our real tribulation. Has anyone ever felt that like the foreign countries have had real tribulation? Like, wow, this is just like the early Christian church. Not until now. Right? The guy that was Sunsea's right-hand man in 1999 wasn't a huge effect in America or other countries. Like, it wasn't huge as it is now. <clears throat> Everything is so global that, you know, uh, when we see Joan, she has a massive effect on the entire world. It is the tribulation that, you know, that we get to see in real life, in real time. We've never experienced this before. And we look at this and we're going to see, like, different reactions coming out depending on how we've lived and how we've done over the last 21 years. That's just, you got to think about reality. When tribulation hits, what's the first thing you do? Right? And I'm, that's why I brought that poll out. That poll comes out last week just to see what's our first reaction. You, We all realize right now, right? Everyone's going to realize right now is we're not going to get full information or more and more. Inf like, as time goes on, more information comes out. And as time goes on, we're going to be like, oh, that's what happened. And the people that are hastily making a decision right now are the ones are going to kind of be in the position of, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, really? That happened? Oh, my goodness. Because, like, uh, this is purely, I'm, I'm talking about purely uh, mental drill right now. Imagine you made your decision, like from the beginning, from the get-go. Oh, no, this is true, da, da 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 whatever it is, right? But then later on, you hear, and it's not true. What would you do? You know what I mean? It's something that we have to think about, you know, in a very clear manner when it comes to God's history. Because if this is truly God's history, then 21 years of first half, 21 years of second half are doing the exact same thing. At the very end, the right-hand person is gone. And like takes, you know, it's taking contingent out with them, right? <clears throat> and it might, it might be the exact same thing happening. And as we're waiting for more and more information, we're like, whoa, so is this really possible? And the answer is, in 1999, how many people thought that that was possible? How many people thought it was possible, right? And a lot of you out there, you know, um, uh, I think one of the hard parts for us is a lot of people might not have the... Uh, full translation of the two-hour video. You might not have it, right? And I'm, it's quite a difficult thing if you haven't listened to it. And, you, you know, because you haven't listened to it, understandably, you'll have no choice but to kind of be in the middle and neutral. But if you listen to the audio, um, you'll get to hear in full form what was actually being said, right? And that's why I can, you know, I'm talking more towards this side as in, yeah, it looks like the same thing is happening in 1999, 
right? And we have to be those that understand it much more clearly, but understand it in terms of God's history, right? Just like I, like I tell you guys right now, if you guys want to listen to a lesson that talks about God's history and how it repeats itself, go listen to the history lesson on my Patreon, right? On my Patreon, it's Lecture Training 16, I believe, because I, I just referred it to someone else. And you're going to see that, wow, this is what God's history is like. And if we don't understand history well, we're not going to understand why it's like this right now. Right? And I hope that all of us here too can really have that mentality and mindset. Right? And understand, uh, you know, what is the proper, what is the mature reaction? What is the proper reaction? Right? And you know, this is just talking about in the mental state we need to have. Later on tomorrow, tomorrow, I'm going to talk about like when it comes to faith, what does this mean? What does it mean by faith? Like what does it mean to our faith, this situation right now? If we're talking purely in a faith-related manner, what does this mean right now? And that's what I'll talk about tomorrow, right? And I hope it's something that all of us can really, uh, you know, get ourselves to mature and be resilient in this way, right? yes. The situation is super emotional, very shocking, right? And uh, it's something that we're going to be like, uh, we're probably going to talk about for a long time, right? It's, it's, it's huge. Like we're going we're gonna to be talking about this for a very, very long time. It's going to be part of history and uh, it's going to be a great story. What you went through during this time is going to be an amazing story between you and God. I really believe this, right? And... Uh, I hope that we will have more revelation. And Well, I'm not hoping. I know there's more. Like everything, eventually everything comes out. Everything, right? So I hope it's something that all of us can uh, uh, understand it at that level and will realize uh, what is happening right now at this time and uh, understanding it how it is when it comes to part of history itself. Okay? So that's something that I just really wanted to share because I'm, you know, I'm thinking back in the first half because I came in 1998 right before that happened and I didn't know, uh, uh, I didn't know actually uh, on very well, but I just heard about it and it wasn't such a big impact for me because 1999 was like three months before I came. Yeah, you know, I came three months before or four months, rel relatively four months because it was, it was on my birthday <coughs> or near my birthday, right? On well, my birthday was the day I met An, and he came to America and did a speech on that. But uh, yeah, very, very interesting. So, um, you know, just giving you guys some more information about what happened in 1999 also, okay? Uh, so uh, today, also, Dr. Zinni on health is happiness. Uh, we got health tips for people in their 20s, which doesn't apply to me. <laughs> So I hope you guys are going to gonna uh, enjoy this one for sure. Uh, this is Dr. Zinni always doing such an amazing and awesome job. All right. So uh, I hope you guys are uh, enjoying these podcasts. If you guys have any questions, like I said, always feel free uh, to contact me at any time. All right. So let's get into today's um, music from member artists from around the world. And we're going to start off with great song. And I think it's something that we have to have the heart and mindset of. This is a Rapture Collective from Australia with Grateful featuring Sapphire. And then we have Tecmo Plus from Japan with the song Diamond, the very BTS-ish song. And then we'll end things off with Jucinda from Canada with You're My Heaven. <laughs> Just gotta say, Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, Holy Son, I just wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart. And my beloved Lord, King of Kings, thank you for leading me beside the waters of peace. Good Shepherd, you made me lie down in green pastures, like a dam that overflows. It's just too much to capture. I'm counting all my blessings and my lessons, and giving thanks like it's a daily obsession. Obsession. Ah, uh, you find me right here in the Garden of Eden. Where else is there to go? What more do I need? My roads grounded like the pine trees They're solid like the rocks be Finer than the cities of Lebanon From A to Z, a to Z. Branches reaching for the sky I'm connected to the heavens like the Wi-Fi Planted by the rivers of life that never run dry As the seasons pass by I'll be bearing fruits just before the harvest time I'm feeling 
feeling so grateful I'm getting in my feelings, now I'm feeling so thankful There's too many stories, I can count them on my bank full Jehovah's been faithful I took the main course, had the lamb, now my faithful Aha, uh -huh, now this don't mean that life hasn't been painful But my God gave me power to overcome when the rain came Each time I'm down, I let my knees touch the ground And every time I call his name, it's send a legion full of angels Thank you, Lord Thank you for everything You gave your life for me I owe to you everything Thank you for giving me strength in the AM So now when I start my days I will start with an amen yeah. Was hell bent on a deathbed Couldn't catch my breath Good news of the gospel He paid the you debt The God sent the Lord's hand Leads me to the golden city kingdom Now I'm wearing true religion
hands make of me your masterpiece a bride of love and joy oh my love shape me perfect me free me from my sins let me live with you forevermore in your kingdom i just want to be your eternal love you're my heaven i know i've hurt you lord brought you pain beyond compare i failed in many ways your heart i rip and tear but lord you've shown me grace in every circumstance you've forgiven my disgrace you gave me one last chance to show you that i love you i need you i thank you my lord i long to be your hands and feet a bride of love and joy oh my love to know you and feel you you're my everything i just want to be your eternal love you're my heaven my love i want to show you how i love you how i need you my lord i long to be your hands and feet a bride of love and joy oh my lord i love you i miss you you're my everything i just want to be your eternal love you're my heaven i love you lord forever more holy son jesus my bridegroom i love you you're in me My bridegroom I love you You're in me I am in you And that song was made from Jucinda over there in Canada with the song Your My Heaven before that Techno Plus from Japan with Diamond and of course feature arts the day that's Rapture Collective from Australia with Grateful featuring Sapphire. All right, so let's get into some news going on around the world. And of course, as brides of this history, we really, really need to know what is going on. So uh, we need to pray for the world. And especially at this time of 21 days, we got to repent. Okay, so let's start off with the Russia and Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine says Russia caliber missile cargo hit in transit to Crimea. Crimea. <coughs> Excuse me. Ukraine says shipment of Russian caliber cruise missiles was destroyed in transit to the Black Sea Fleet in Crimea. Ukraine has reported the destruction of multiple Russian cruise missiles as they were being transported by rail to Russia's Black Sea Fleet in Crimea. Ukraine's military agency said late on Monday that multiple caliber cruise missiles were destroyed uh, by an explosion without explicitly saying Ukraine was responsible for the blast or exactly how the shipment of powerful missiles was destroyed. The Russian-appointed governor of Crimea said on social media that anti-aircraft weapons were fired in the vicinity of uh, Zankoy, where Ukraine's intelligence agency said the cruise missiles were destroyed. Aksenov said falling debris injured one person and damaged a home as well as a store. Caliber cruise missiles have been used frequently in Russian attacks on Ukraine. In July 2022, a submarine launched caliber cruise missiles uh, that killed 23 civilians, including three children. And in the central Ukrainian city of Vinnytsia, Russia claimed the missile was directed at a meeting of Ukrainian Air Force commanders and representatives of Western arms suppliers. Uh, also, <coughs> excuse me, as uh, Xi Jinping of China and Putin meet over war crimes, right? Uh, war, no, they're not meeting over war crimes, but the U.S. is urging Xi Jinping to press Putin over war crimes in Ukraine. So the U.S. has urged Chinese President Xi Jinping to press 
Putin on ceasing the war crimes being carried out by Russia and Ukraine. The two will meet again on Tuesday for official talks during Mr. Xi's first visit to Moscow since the invasion. And the White House National Security Council spokesman called on Mr. Xi to urge his Russian counterpart to withdraw troops from Ukraine. Uh, basically, John Kirby said seeking a ceasefire would not be enough, and they hope that President Xi will press President Putin to cease bombing Ukrainian cities, hospitals, and schools to halt the war crimes and atrocities and to withdraw his troops. Uh, but they are concerned that instead China will reiterate calls for a ceasefire that leaves Russian forces inside Ukraine's sovereign territory, and any ceasefire that does not address the removal of Russian forces from Ukraine would effectively ratify Russia's illegal conquests. Putin has said he will discuss a 12-point plan proposed by Mr. Xi to settle the acute crisis in Ukraine. Uh, last but not least, we're going to France. And I didn't know this was going on, but because of the France pension reform, Macron's government survives a no-confidence vote. The French government has narrowly survived a vote of no confidence, which was triggered when it, for it was forced through an increase in the pension age to 64. It sparked new anti-government protests in Paris, where 101 people were arrested after standoffs with police. The vote tabled by centrist MPs had 278 votes in favor, falling short of the 287 votes needed. And if it was successful, then Macron would have had to name a new government or call new elections. A second... Uh, no confidence motion tabled by Marine Le Pen's far right National Rally Party also did not pass. And now both votes have failed. The controversial bill to raise the retirement age from 62 to 64 will become law. So the votes were held after the PM, Elizabeth Bourne, used a special constitutional power called Article 49.3 to push the bill through without a vote last week. And it sparked angry protests at the weekend with some demonstrators clashing with police and blocking streets with debris fires in central Paris as well as cities around the country. So that failed vote yesterday or on Monday saw fresh protests in the capital with a tense standoff between protesters and anti-riot police. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a really, really big thing around the world. Even in America, with the pension age, uh, there's just not enough money to, to pay all these people. The, you know, the, the government's going to go bankrupt in this type of situation here, too. Uh, so that's the top three news around the world. Hope it's something that uh, helps you guys out when it comes to you praying for the world. So let's get into some uh, sporting news. The World Baseball Classic, it was Japan versus Mexico in the semifinal. Winner plays against the U.S. in the final. And it was bottom of the ninth. And it was... Murataka Murakami, the star Japanese third baseman who owns the nation's home run record and is coming off a triple crown, struck out in his first three plate appearances on Monday night's World Baseball Classic semifinal, but he came through when it mattered most, delivering a two-run double in the ninth inning that sent Japan to a thrilling 6-5 walk-off victory. So congratulations to Japan. Japan versus the U.S. in the finals for the World Baseball Classic. In F1, we had the Saudi Arabia GP. It was the Bahrain GP. And once again, Max Verstappen won the race. Uh, but... The Grand Prix belonged to Fernando Alonso. He made the podium. He came in third place in his, in his Aston Martin debut. And it was excitement for, for everyone to see someone, uh, one of the oldest people in it, just coming up and uh, one of the most talented drivers ever in modern Formula One era. And he is in a competitive position. Uh, last but not least, in the NFL, the Washington Commanders are on sale. And guess who's in the buying? It is Magic Johnson joining the group bidding to buy the Commanders. Irvin Magic Johnson joined the group led by Josh Harris bidding to own the Washington Commanders. Uh, Johnson, the Basketball Hall of Famer and part owner of the Los Angeles Dodgers, was part of the Harris group when it failed to land the Denver Broncos last summer. And Harris owns the NBA's Philadelphia 76ers and the New Jersey Devils. Washington owners Dan and Tanya Snyder announced their intention to sell the team in November. Forbes listed the value of the franchise at $5.6 billion. So... Uh, you know, that's no small chunk of change, but uh, let's see what happens there, all right? So there it is, guys. That's the top three news in sports and around the world. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. But you know what that means. It is the golden time. And yes, this is the golden time, a time of praise and worship to the Holy Trinity. Hope all of you guys are looking forward to giving glory to God and the Holy Spirit. So, what are we going to praise and worship today? We're going to start off with some oldies today, eternally thankful, and then on the Lord's side. And we'll end things off with an oldie but a goodie, it's Bury the Old. So, as one body of the Morning Star Drive, let's spend this time giving praise, honor, and glory to the Holy Trinity. 
Trinity. Thanks to him, with this blessing, I will give my everything for him. Now I will protect my Lord, standing on his side. I will not forget the conditions he set for me. Now no matter what kind of trials may come, my heart will not crumble. I'll stand with him. The Lord is with me. I will go. Give him glory, praise to the Lord, my 
remember how he showed his love, leading me to this perfect history. Now, as an owner, I'll fulfill the will. I am living to fulfill his thoughts in your history. Now I will protect my Lord, standing on his side. I will not forget the conditions he set for me. Now, no matter what kind of trials may come, my heart will not crumble. I'll stand with him. The Lord is with me. I will go and I'll give him glory. Praise to the Lord, my love. And now I'll testify to all the world. I'll preach about the person. you 
And what a great song that is, Bury the Old. Before that, On the Lord's Side, and of course, Eternally Thankful. All right. So now that uh, that time of praise and worship is all finished, let's get into uh, today's word study. And of course, every single Wednesday, we do go over uh, the scriptures, books, history, early Christian church. We go over a lot of uh, different things I think is very important and pertinent for our faith to grow and to understand the context of things that are going on. So today, I do want to talk about the book of Revelation. I did this probably, I did... Um, Revelation maybe maybe two or three months ago. I think somewhere around that time. And today I'll go into some a little bit of different things here too about the book of Revelation, all right? So let's get into today's word study, the book of Revelation, okay? So the one thing we do know is the book of Revelation was uh, written in the first century around 96 AD, and it was done in Asia Minor. And of course, uh, everyone knows that the, the author uh, wrote this book uh, in Ephesus, and he's known as John the Elder. And according to this book, John was on the island of Patmos. Of course, it's Apostle John. And not far not far from the coast of Asia Minor. And those of you guys don't know what Patmos is, the Romans used that island as a penal colony. So it's like a prison, right? And uh, this has traditionally been taken to mean that he had been exiled as a martyr for his Christian faith. There are some stories that he was first boiled in oil but didn't die and then was sent there. That I don't know if that's true or not, but... I read a couple sites, and they're all saying that he was boiled in oil first, and then he was sent to the penal colony. Uh, and some other scholars are saying that this stop, it was just a stop, and it might have been a regular stop on a preaching circuit, right? And uh, what John says, he says that he was in the spirit of the Lord's day, and he heard behind him a loud voice like a trumpet, right? That's like in Revelation chapter 1, verse 11. And this voice starts him to tell him to write everything he's about to see. And this uh, begins the revelation or the revelatory vision that is at the center of the book, right? Now, Ephesus uh, was both the capital of the Roman province of Asia and one of the earliest centers of Christianity. And the book uh, contains seven short letters of exhortation to the Christian churches uh, in the seven leading cities of Asia Minor, which is Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea, all right? And we know those uh, stories, these seven churches, and the region would become a key area for the expansion of Christianity into the Roman Empire, but it was precisely this intersection that created the problem for the author, uh, as he called for Christians to treat the Roman administration as an agent of the devil. But recognizing this comes from understanding how to read this kind of apocalyptic literature, so almost all Testament, New Testament scholars now take the view that the book of Revelation was written during the reign of Domitian, right? Like I said, around 96 uh, AD. And he is supposed to be the beast from the sea beyond doubt, right? So what is not uniformly understood is how political oppression or persecution against the, church, the Christians of Asian Minor uh, influenced the situation. And uh, this is how Revelation was responding to the situation. And there are references to martyrdom, persecution, uh, in this book, uh, but to what extent there there was a real roundup of Christians going on is a matter of some debate. And here we can examine the questions if you read the book of Revelation by itself by looking at the views of several of the most notable recent scholars on Revelation, right? Uh, the traditional view of the New Testament scholarship of Revelation uh, is more of a apocalyptic literature in general, and it grew out of circumstances of persecution. So Revelation is often compared to Daniel in this regard, since Daniel was written in direct response to the oppressive anti-Jewish measures of the Seleucid monarch, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Antiochus Epiphanes the fourth, right? And at that time of the Maccabean revolt, right? So if you go into my... Uh, some of my history uh, lessons I do go over in my uh, YouTube channel, you will see some of these happen too. And scholars would point to Revelation chapter 2, verse 13, which refers to Antipas, my witness who was killed among you in conjunction, in conjunction with the church at Pergamon. It also refers to the two witnesses who were killed and their bodies left in the streets of Jerusalem in Re Revelation chapter 11. And there is a numberless crowd of saints who have uh, washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, who suffered and who dwell before the altar of heaven. And it must also be remembered that the words witness and um, the word testify and testimony, which appears like 19 times in Revelation, all come, th come from the Greek word martyr, 
from which you get mar- like the word martyr comes from that. So it's traditionally assumed that there was a direct persecution of those Christians living in Asia Minor during the reign of Domitian, and that this corresponds to John's own exile and imprisonment on Patmos. And this is the view maintained in two of the standard and very well-respected older commentaries on Revelation. And when we look at how Sunseem interprets Revelation, uh, he it from what we've learned and what we've seen all through my 25 years in Providence, he's never gone through every single part of Revelation, but the parts that pertain to the situation happening at that time, especially he talks a lot about the seven churches and also uh, Revelation chapter 11 when it comes to uh, uh, the two witnesses. And also you'll look at more at like Revelation chapter 20. And these are ones that Sunstein does talk about a lot. But, you know, more recently within the last 10 to 15 years, he has gone into other chapters like 17, 18, 19. Uh, and you're going to find other ones, 14 he talks about also. And it, it, it is quite refreshing because uh, it is apocalyptic scripture, like a doomsday type of like a, a book. Uh, but what Sunstein kind of, comforts everyone's like no no don't think of it that way it is a past present and future book right and the example he gave for instance is like uh the two witnesses the two witnesses have you know if you look at revelation chapter 11 two witnesses have the power to bring all kinds of plagues onto the earth and shut up the sky and those two are moses and elijah right and we learned that also too when it comes to the two olive trees two witnesses lecture that you learn that those are the two witnesses in revelation chapter 11 but since it's talking also it's that's the past but it's also talking about the future and we, when we think about the two witnesses in the future also, right? When it comes to the seven churches, he talks about what it means back then. And of course, what does it mean right now at this time in this history? He'll talk about those seven churches and where we stand right now at this moment. And of course, today, uh, a lot of referencing is done right now. And I, I, uh, I implore you guys to read Revelation chapter 18 and 19. Uh, that's some, like these are two chapters that a lot of people are reading at this moment to, to get a better look at what is happening at this moment. And, you know, I, I know that it's uh, a very, very difficult time, emotional time, too. And everyone's going to be at different levels. And I think one of the things that, you know, as we get into this time here, everyone should be very respectful of everyone's decisions and when they read or listen to or make a decision on what they do. Right. Everyone's got different timing. So please respect everyone. Uh, like when you read Revelation 18, 19, you know, people are going to kind of freak out and say, Master Sky, what are you saying? And the answer is, this is what people are reading right now, right? So take a good read at it and just, you know, uh, pray about it and see what's going on with that too. And uh, if people are, are all listening to different things, like for instance, I talked to someone who hasn't listened to the two-hour audio yet and the key parts of the two-hour audio. And because of that, I can't say anything to them. I can't because they haven't heard everything yet and they'll need to hear it on their own, right? And for me is, you know, I'll make, you know, I'll make my decisions and the things that I think about and, you know, everyone else too has to make their decisions from what they have heard and not hear say that someone else said this, right? And I really, really hope it's something that we will all be able to do and understand, yeah, we are living in the book of Revelations right now. Right? Remember, Revelation is about past, present, future. Future is us right now at this time. We're living in the present when it comes to the final year of uh, the 2023. A lot of people have different, different ideas, different thoughts. What does 2023 mean? Uh, and of course, the only, you know, we, you know, a lot of people are trying to figure out what does that mean? What does it mean? Does it mean this? Does it mean that? We're not really sure. Uh, and part of the reason why I'm going to tell you guys that we're not very sure is because history took a turn. Like, remember, our, our uh, grave period was originally supposed to be uh, 1999 to 2002, right? But it is no longer 1999 to 2002. What is it now? It, was, it went from 1999 to 2013, which is a 14-year, was three and a half years times four, right? So since we took the path of the cross, the history has taken a change and a turn. So that's why it's very, very difficult for us to say, this is what it means right now. We really, really don't know at the time. So I hope that all of us, um, biggest thing is to wait until the end of 2023, which is not a long time. It feels like a long time, but it's not a long time. All right. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, uh, this time looking into the book of revelations is something that you guys can learn a lot from and that we can, uh, even look deeper, uh, into what is going to happen in the future by looking at the past and the present. I think that's one of the perfect things revelation does. It teaches us the future by looking at the past 
And why is that possible? Because that is the principle of reoccurring history, right? And I think that's something that we have to always keep in mind, right? And that's why I need, I, I was talking about that at the very beginning of this podcast, uh, of what happened in the first 21 years and then what happened second half 21 years and what's happening at the end of it. And that's something we should all be thinking about. Okay, so there it is, guys. That is the word study for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. The book of Revelation didn't go a lot or deep into it because we did go just recently go into it uh, several months back. And, you know, we, you know, if it comes up again, we'll do some more on that, too. All right. So let's get into today's uh, song of choice for today. Today's song of choice. Once again, I'm going to go to Israel in New Breed. I really, really like their stuff right now. Great song. This one's called Sanctuary. And I, you know, I think that's a place we all want to be in, in a sanctuary. And it's called Sanctuary and Alpha and Omega. Hope you guys really enjoy this. This is Israel and New Breed. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true.
And what a powerful song. Just hearing it, this gospel music is just, uh, is really inspiring and moving. I just recognize this song. When I listened to it, I was like, wait a second. I know this song is from Sunday School also. Like, you know, when I, we, I played Jesus Loves Me last week, this song is also a Sunday School song, Sanctuary. Uh, it doesn't sound like this. Be- the original is a very, it's a Sunday School song that goes, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Oh, what's the next words? Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living Sanctu- sanctuary for my Lord. Something like that. I don't know. Do you guys know that song? Yeah, I, I just recognize it when I'm looking at it. I was like, oh, I know this song. That's another Sunday school song. But they just really amped it up. And they put it together with that song, Alpha and Omega. I love that ending with the big amen. All right? So there it is, guys. That is the song of choice for today. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. That is Israel and New Breed with Sanctuary Alpha and Omega. Which leads us into today's last segment of the day. And, of course, every single Wednesday we have Health is Happiness. And today it is Dr. Zinni going to talk about health tips for people in their 20s. Uh, which is going to be great for a lot of you out there because you're in your 20s. Oh, you guys are so lucky. <laughs> All right, everyone, please welcome Dr. Zinni with Health is Happiness. Hi, everyone. Dr. Zinni here. And welcome to another episode of Health is Happiness. So we've heard some requests from listeners about what topics to cover in this segment. Today, we're going to discuss one of them. That is, what are some important ways to take care of our health in our 20s and 30s? Essentially, what should we do now while we're young so we can be healthy when we're older? So I'm going to go over some tips for your health that you can apply in this age group. It would be great if you could integrate this into your daily life to help you form healthy habits early on. For those who are beyond this age group, no worries. Whatever you do now can still have a positive impact on your health in the future. So heart disease and stroke are still the leading causes of death worldwide, according to the World Health Organization. Diabetes, cancer, and infectious diseases were also on the list of top 10 causes globally. A lot of times when people start having high cholesterol, blood pressure issues, or diabetes, a lot of these effects happen in your 30s and 40s, but they're actually caused by the cumulative effects of what you did decades before. Your 20s are a really good time to start lowering your risk of diseases. Luckily, there are practical ways to lower your risk of heart and stroke, diabetes, and cancer early on. The first one is to eat better. Prepare your meals at home and learn how to cook. In your 20s, it's helpful to learn how to cook so you can choose what ingredients you put into your food and you can control what you take into your body. And when I say cook, I don't mean just reheating processed foods. (laughs) You can start by adding foods high in antioxidants every day as these help reduce the risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and cancer. So what are antioxidants? Why do they help to reduce diseases? Antioxidants are compounds produced in your body and also found in foods. They help to defend your cells from damage caused by potentially harmful molecules called free radicals. A little bit of science here. Free radicals are highly unstable and reactive molecules. They're unstable because they're missing an electron. The free radicals collide with your cells in an attempt to steal an electron, and this may damage your DNA and other important structures in your cells in the process. Free radicals occur as a result of normal metabolic processes. For example, when your body uses oxygen, it creates free radicals as a byproduct. When free radicals accumulate, they cause oxidative stress. Imagine an apple that ripens and then decays and then rots. That's similar to what oxidative stress does to your body. Oxidative stress is when you have too many free radicals and not enough antioxidants. Antioxidants are important molecules that neutralize these free radicals, so they protect your cells from that damage. These antioxidants essentially can donate an electron to these free radicals without becoming a free radical itself. Our bodies make a small amount of antioxidants, but relies on our diet to get the rest that we need. When you're young and healthy, your body does a pretty good job of dealing with these free radicals, and you won't even notice anything. But if you don't eat right, you smoke, or you're exposing yourself to a lot of environmental sources of free radicals, 
your risk for cellular and organ damage goes up. And as you age, your free radical defense mechanisms start to taper. Free radicals in the environment are things like exposure to tobacco smoke, UV, chemicals such as asbestos and vinyl chloride, viruses, air pollution, radiation. Free radicals damage your cells over time, so unopposed free radicals causes premature aging, unwanted skin changes, and increases your risk of chronic diseases such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and cancers. Eating a diet rich in antioxidants reduces that oxidative stress. So foods high in antioxidants include things in the berry family. So many types of berries, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, goji berries, cranberries, as well as pecans, kale, spinach, artichokes. So eating a handful of berries a day can do wonders for your health. Next, other than adding antioxidants to your diet, you can reduce your chance of developing hypertension, high cholesterol, and heart and stroke when you get older by making sure you eat omega-3 fatty acids, omega-3 fats. Omega-3 fats are healthy, polyunsaturated fats that help to lower your triglycerides, reduce inflammation, and promote brain and heart health. Triglycerides are a type of fat or lipid found in your blood. When you eat, your body converts any calories it doesn't need into triglycerides, and these triglycerides are stored in your fat cells. Later, triglycerides are released for energy between meals. Anyway, omega-3 can help reduce triglycerides in your body. And specific types of omega-3s are DHA, EPA found in algae, fish, and seafood, and ALA found in plants. Common sources of plant ALA include walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seed oil, and DHA is the most abundant omega-3 fat in the brain. The FDA notes that DHA and EPA both help to support brain function and development. Certain types of fish such as salmon, trout, Mackerel, herring, sardines, and anchovies are rich in omega-3 fatty acids, including DHA. So try incorporating these foods into your diet regularly. Unfortunately, the popular white fish, including haddock, tilapia, and cod, are typically lower in essential fatty acids. In addition, frying fish lowers the content of omega-3 fatty acids in foods. (laughs) Okay, let's move on to the next dietary tip. Try to start limiting extra sugar and sodium. Added sugar is problematic for your arteries and for your heart. High blood sugar damages the endothelium or inner lining of the blood vessels, and this decreases the nitric oxide, which is required to help your vessels relax and expand. Without it, the vessels become narrow and the flow of blood in them decreases to your key organs like your heart and brain. In your 20s, you might get away with taking in all sources of sugar or so you think you do. Things like soda pop, dessert coffees, fruit juices have a lot of concentrated sugar. But as you do this over time, your arteries will suffer. And if you don't watch what you do, you may ultimately develop diseases like hypertension, diabetes, coronary artery diseases, and strokes. The World Health Organization recommends limiting added sugar intake to roughly 25 grams or 6 teaspoons per day. For salt, Sodium, stick to 2,300 milligrams, about one teaspoon of salt a day. The global average salt intake is estimated to be more than four and a half times the recommended intake. So taking more than two teaspoons a day increases your risk of heart and stroke. Too much salt increases your blood pressure by drawing more water into your bloodstream. This can lead to hypertension, which stiffens and narrows the blood vessels. The high pressure against the vessel causes damage to the inside lining of the arteries. Atherosclerosis can occur where plaques start to build up in your arteries. These plaques are essentially deposits made up of cholesterol, fatty substances, cellular waste products, calcium, and fibrin, which is a clotting material in your blood. And as the plaques build up, the blood vessels become thickened and narrow, and this can block off blood and oxygen flow to key organs. And so the heart tries to pump blood throughout the body harder, which further increases blood pressure. 
You can reduce your intake of fats and healthy lipids by filling your meals with leafy greens and fiber, especially in the form of beans or legumes, as well as things that are good for your gastrointestinal microbiome, such as modest amounts of sauerkraut, kimchi, and yogurt. You've already learned a lot about gut health in Episode 9 of Health is Happiness, so you can refer back to that segment if you need more of a refresher on details of how it helps you with reducing inflammation and unwanted weight. So eat more antioxidants, omega-3s, leafy greens, vegetables and fibers, and things for your gut health. Eat less sugar and salt and choose low-fat, low-cholesterol foods that reduce blood pressure issues and the buildup of plaques in your blood vessels. The next health tip to do in your 20s is to exercise more, not necessarily harder. Everyone knows that exercise can help keep your heart healthy, keep your weight down, and reduce stress. But fewer people know that exercise doesn't have to be intense to be beneficial. We're all learning that's probably high volume, low to moderate intensity movement that is associated with longevity. So don't think of exercise like an entree you get once a day. Instead, treat it like a garnish you sprinkle on every meal, all day long. Cumulative exercise counts. Move whenever you can. Can you have a standing or walking meeting instead of a seated meeting? Great. If you parked further away, great, that counts too. If you can find stairs, embrace them. Are you located on the 20th floor? Well, you don't have to take all 20 floors, but make a habit of getting off on the 17th floor and building up from there. Don't discount any type of physical activity. As we learned from Julius in episode 5 of Health and Happiness, where he talks about building healthy habits, it's more important to have exercise goals that are realistic, something you can incorporate into your lifestyle, something that is sustainable that you can do consistently for a long time. So today we're out of time, so I'm going to wrap up here. But there are more health tips for the 20s to 30s age group that I want to share with you. These include spending time in nature, getting vitamin D, limiting screen time, avoiding substances, getting adequate sleep, and developing good coping strategies for stress. We'll go over these in more detail on the next episode of Health is Happiness. And thank you so much, Dr. Zinni, for another wonderful episode of Health is Happiness. Health tips for those in their 20s. And yes, it has nothing to do with me. So I'm not interested. But all of you guys out there who are in your 20s, hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a comment below for Dr. Zinni. I'm sure she will appreciate it. But you know what? Even if you're not in your 20s, it's good that we can know this so that we can tell the people who are younger than us and lead them in the right way. All right? So there it is, guys. That is the end of today's podcast. Hope you guys have an amazing and awesome day. Have an awesome service tonight. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the morning star drive on 117.8 it's the morning star drive 117.8 you saw run up with sky now's the time don't delay i'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly so let's realign just listen and fill your mind i'm burning with desire and the passion nobody can stop me when i'm like this i got my head in the zone you know i'm on the morning star drive you know I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm